So I came back to Remnant 2 after the DLC dropped, and after looking around on YouTube through the latest in soulless content printer builds, such as Fextra or Root Doctor, I was relieved to see that even after three months, people still don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Which is why I am here today to bring you the latest in tanking. One build given two forms. Two forms because one allows you to go into an extremely high DPS scenario such as Shahala, take a black hole to the face, and leave saying... Thank you for the meal. Whereas the other, the goal is to literally kill yourself, and in the process, the boss as well. And yes, even an empathy boss, by the way. Which is why I specifically showed that to address that complaint. So if anyone still thinks after today's video that empathy is this unfathomably hard affix to deal with, you are cordially invited to eat my ass. We're gonna talk about the suicidal build first as explaining how that one works fundamentally will build into how the second one works later. But as usual, we are going to talk about what we are using before we talk about why we're using it. So if you have any questions, if you see anything that's really confusing, especially if you're a prior viewer of mine, you're going to see some choices in this video that make no sense. Please just wait and I will explain. Starting with our armor, we are using the full Lido Mark 1 set. Note that we are even using the Lido Mark 1 gloves. And that's because not that anyone has even noticed, but the Labyrinth gloves were nerfed. Lido Mark 1 gloves are now the best in the game, and anyone telling you to use Labyrinth hasn't touched this game in several weeks. Our amulet is the Necklace of Flowing Life, and our rings are Ring of the Robust, Burden of the Divine, Seal of the Empress, and Hardcore Metal Band. Our relic is the Resonating Heart, with healing effectiveness, health, and damage reduction. In our traits, start with Triage and Regrowth growth given to us by default, since we are using Medic as our primary archetype and Summoner as our second, and then we spec into Kinship, Fortify, Vigor, Spirit, Blood Bond, Rugged, Siphoner, Barkskin, and then Glutton at 8, and Expertise at 2 but all the others are at rank 10. That may seem like a lot compared to prior videos, and that's just because they increased the trait cap from 65 to 85, meaning we have a lot more options. When it comes to your weapons, I truly don't give a shit what you end up using. For your melee, just use whatever looks good. I only care that on your two guns, you have between them both Firestorm and Song of Aethir. But beyond that, just use whatever you're comfortable with. And then lastly, if you have any scrap to spare, and considering that you're going to be doing this in Apocalypse difficulty, you should, you should be using the Mudtooth's Tonic. There are other options for the concoction here, some of which were just added to the game, like Meat Shake, but we will touch more on that later. Moving on to why we are using what we are using, though, starting with damage reduction. The full Lido Mark 1 set, along with the 50% armor effectiveness granted to us by Fortify, brings our total armor to 301.2, in turn giving us an armor DR rating of 60.1. Then, with flat damage reduction, we have the 5% from our Relic Fragment, 10% from Bark Skin on our trait, and then 25% from Hardcore Metal Band in the form of 5 Bulwark stats totaling out at 40% flat DR. 40% flat DR and 60.1% armor DR brings our total DR to 76.06. .06. If you are confused on how any of this is calculated or what any of this means in the context of tanking and effective health, then please, for the love of God, go watch this other video I have prepared for you. It's an older video, but the math hasn't changed. And I promise you, especially if you're newer to this kind of stuff, that you will leave that video considerably better equipped to deal with builds in this game. Now that damage reduction is out of the way, we've explained how we're trying to reduce incoming damage as much as possible. Now let's talk about healing to discuss how we are recovering the health lost. For our primary archetype, we are using the Medic class, the reason for which is that its prime perk allows you to, after X amount of healing, regain a Relic Charge. Not clarified incredibly well in that description is that it is any ally of any type, meaning the healing could be done to a co-op teammate, or it could be done to a minion, which is why we have Summoner as our secondary archetype, running either the Hollow or Flyer minions, not the Reaver by the way. The Reaver minion fucking sucks for this, and we'll explain why later. Medic also gives us the triage trait, which gives us 50% increased healing effectiveness, and then the benevolence passive also gives us 15% increased relic efficacy. The relic in question is the resonating heart, and this may surprise some of you, because in the past I made an entire 12 minute long video detailing the math on why resonating heart was a terrible choice for solo play when compared to something like crystal heart. And while crystal heart is still very good, some things were done in the DLC that significantly skew the math towards resonating heart. And that honestly deserves its own entire other video, which I may or may not get around to. But just know that DLC items were a huge, huge game changer when it comes to builds like this. And that's not something you'll see until we talk about the second form of this build. Resonating Heart on use regenerates a percentage of your max health over 5 seconds. When the heal ends, any overhealed health is doubled and awarded over the next 20 seconds. Again, not clarified very well here, is that it is overhealed health to any healed target. Meaning it could be your co-op teammates, 
or again your minions. So not only when you use this relic are you having an easier time getting your relics back because of the medic prime perk affecting minions as well, but you're also just getting shitloads more healing because the healing will scale and double based on the healing done to minions. And then we are using Ring of the Robust and Seal of the Empress to increase our total health along with Mudtooth's tonic because increasing your total health also increases the healing done since the healing done is a percentage, not a flat amount. Lastly, to wrap up our healing, we use Burden of the Divine, which is something I never ever thought I would ever use in a solo build. But Ring of the Divine reduces damage dealt by the wearer by 10%. That's pretty unattractive. It's the next part that matters. 50% of self-healing applies to allies. That does, again, <laughs> include minions, meaning that when you use your relic and it's applying to yourself and your minions as well, 50% of the healing that is healing you is also going to the minions again, which means that the five second window where it's tracking for overheal just gets even more healing. Burden of the Divine is a larger healing increase on this build than Nimue's ribbon would be on the neck. That's how crazy of a heal increase Burden of the Divine is on a Resonating Heart build. And if you are ever seeing a build anywhere that uses Resonating Heart but doesn't have a double minion setup with Burden of the Divine, they are fucking trolling you. And if you don't understand how that is, or if you're confused on healing in the context of DR and effective health and meaningful healing. I do recommend you go watch that video where I dissect Resonating Heart versus Crystal Heart, because even though the numbers have changed due to the addition of DLC items, it's still a really good explanation on why one is better than the other in any given context. In regards to going beyond the DR cap though, because while the DR cap is 80%, that doesn't mean you're stuck there, because there are means to go about it. The first of which is Blood Bond, which we have already spec'd to 10. That allows you to share 10% of your damage received with your minions. So even though my DR here is 76.06, after I take damage that is reduced by that 76.06, then whatever is left is reduced an additional 10%, and that 10% is sent to and split between my minions. So even though my in-game DR value is 76.06, my effective DR value is 78.45. If you're ever running minions, always run Blood Bond. It's literally free DR. On top of that, we have Song of Aether, which I told you to bring on one of your weapons earlier. That is a 15% reduction to enemy damage dealt. That is reducing the enemy's damage before they even hit you. So enemies would shoot, but that damage is already reduced by 15%. The 85% remaining is reduced by your 76.06% DR. And then whatever is left is reduced by the 10% split from Blood Bond, meaning that my total effective DR is 81.68%, bringing our total effective health, or the amount of damage it would take to kill us in one shot, to 1,161. And our healing, in terms of effective health regained, is 431 per second. But now that we've explained our damage reduction and our healing. Why are we trying to kill ourselves? How does this kill a boss? Why are we taking Necklace of Flowing Life and Firestorm? Necklace of Flowing Life increases Grey Health conversion by an additional 100%. And for those who don't know, Grey Health conversion has a base rate of 50%, meaning that half the damage you take is converted to Grey Health. This makes it so it's adding an additional 100%, so 50 plus 50 is 100% Grey Health conversion rate total, meaning that all damage you take is now converted to Grey Health, and multiplied by 5, and returned to you as mod power. But what do we even do with all that mod power? We use Firestorm, and we shoot it at ourselves. The reason for which is the burning will do several things. The first is it will maintain our hardcore metal band bulwark stacks, which require you to take damage. On top of that, it's going to further damage you for the sake of Necklace of Flowing Life, making it a bit recursive because all damage done to you by Firestorm is turned into mod power. And since most bosses have to approach you at some point or another, this means you not only get to be more tanky and generate infinite mod power by standing in the fire, but the boss will also take damage. You are literally killing yourself to kill the boss. For older viewers, yes, this is more or less a solo version of the co-op build I posted a long time ago, though of course not nearly as effective because the co-op build was beyond absurd, but for solo play this is about as good as you're gonna get. And in terms of tanking, the next version we'll talk about is even more crazy. Some of you are probably going to note that this all seems really simple, and you're not sure how effective it might be. And yes, it is simple, but just because it's simple doesn't mean that it's not effective. We're just bolstering our DR as much as we can, bolstering our healing as much as we can, and then literally cooking ourselves. And I want to drive home that that is all it needs to be. You don't need some 30 fucking interaction build, as long as the math adds up. I will link in the description every single fight that I used this on, so that way you can go through and see that this is effective. Sometimes it might take longer, but it works. You don't have to dodge, you literally just use Firestorm and a Relic every 20 seconds. You can obviously spam Firestorm more if you lower your kinship level to allow it to do more damage to you and in turn get more mod power. 
when I went around and fought everything, I had kinship to the max, basically, because I was just playing it safe. I didn't want to risk a boss doing enough damage to line up with Firestorm doing enough damage to kill me. But if you want to do more damage and the boss is just a total fucking pushover like uh, Delane or Talratha or Cancer, because those are all just fucking jokes, you can lower your kinship level, increase the amount of damage that you're doing to yourself, and in turn spam Firestorm even more. But what happens when this isn't enough? What happens when bosses can still kill? You. Well, for one, you should be using Song of Aethir if you need a panic button, because that's not a passive mod, it is a active mod that you have to use in order to gain its benefit. But if even Song of Aethir isn't enough to help you on this build, then that's where we start to transition into the next build, and that is the Gigachad build, or champions who eat black holes for breakfast. The first thing we're going to do is change the amulet from Necklace of Flowing Life to something else. We have two options here. The primary reason we're doing this is because obviously these other rings are kind of hard to change before we change the necklace, as we're still not DR capped. And the only place we can really get any more meaningful DR is from the necklace. The two options are either Participation Medal, which if it weren't for the second option would probably be the strongest amulet in the entire game. It increases your health by 10, your stamina by 10, your movement speed by 10, and your damage reduction reduction by 10, putting us right up to the DR cap instantly, just from switching that amulet. However, there is something even more fuck busted than this, and that is the Brewmaster's Meaty Massive Cork, which increases your active concoction limit by 2, and reduces all incoming damage, or it just grants you 2% flat DR, for each active concoction. This amulet is so good, but the primary reason that this thing is awesome is that it allows us to take what is arguably the only good thing about the Alchemist class which is its increased active concoction limit. Separate it from the class, so that way we can safely throw that class away and never touch it again. And then play pseudo alchemist with brewmaster's cork we're obviously going to be running three concoctions with this so we get six percent flat dr on top of that we have mud tooth tonic which is increasing our health by 25 we have meat shake which increases our dr by a flat eight percent and then we have dark cider which increases our hp by 6.66 percent now that change alone just from flowing life to brewmaster's cork added 300 ehp meaning we can take 300 more damage before dying and increased our ehp per second by 110 that is a a lot. However, as you'll notice, we're over the DR cap, which means something needs to change here, or we're just kind of trolling ourselves. The first thing we'll change in response to that is our armor set, which we are going to move down to the Lido Mark II armor, which may surprise some people because it's technically worse than the Lido Mark I armor. But guys, the difference between Lido Mark I and Lido Mark II in terms of base armor is four. Four armor for five less weight. That's good. We want that. This puts our weight right at 90, which, with strong back, allows us to get a heavy dog instead of a fat flop. I personally don't give a shit, but for the people who have incessantly complained in my last videos about wanting to be able to dodge, here you go. It's free. And with all the trait points we have, we're really not missing anything by specking into this specifically for that. Next up on the chopping block is Ring of the Robust. Since we're already DR capped, the armor doesn't matter as much, and it's just a lower HP increase than Seal of the Empress would be. We can't lose Hardcore Metal Band, and we can't lose Burden of the Divine. So that's the one that has to go. And instead we put in Dense Silicon Ring, which is like a discount necklace of flowing life. Instead of making it so if damage is multiplied by five and returned to you as mod power, it does kind of an opposite thing and only two times, but two times the amount of health you regen is regained as mod power. So it's still going to benefit just as much as necklace is flowing life would in the context of roasting yourself alive. It's just not going to give you as much mod power, but it's still functional. And the result is a fat chunk of healing more than our build did with necklace of flowing life, as well as a good bit more of EHP. But again, this is only if you need more EHP. HP and healing to deal with a boss, but there can be times where Firestorm is just not relevant. This could be Shahala even, although there are technically ways to use Firestorm there. Or Annihilation. Annihilation flies around so much that Firestorm really isn't a great choice, and in some of those cases, neither would Dense Silicon Ring. So what you would do in such a case is replace Dense Silicon Ring with Dead King's Memento, giving you an additional 110 EHP and 40 more EHP per second. But with Blood Bond and Song of Aethir in play, it literally matches the EHP that the Crystal Heart build boasted before the DLC. It not only matches the EHP, but it totally shits on its EHP per second in terms of meaningful healing. Don't get me wrong, the Crystal Heart build still gets more 
more EHP total by a good 200 or so, meaning that the Crystal Heart build that we'll talk about in another video still has uses for edging out more survivability against some very high damage, not DPS, but damage, bosses. But in terms of overall general play survivability, I don't think there is anything in the entire game that can beat this, because if the boss does too much damage, then you just switch to the Giga Chad version. If the boss does not that much damage, then you can just switch to the full Firestorm spam and blast away. You don't have the concern that other tank builds have had in the past, where they were only effective against very specific damage thresholds for bosses. Because those builds have the problem where if the boss didn't damage you enough, you wouldn't heal enough. And because you didn't heal enough, you'd actually run out of relics. But this isn't a concern here, because the boss doesn't have to damage you. You're hurting yourself. You are literally the problem and the solution in this case, with Firestorm spamming. Meaning that the suicide version of the build will work across all difficulties without concern. The Giga Chad build, however, is still subject to bosses needing to do very high amounts of damage, or else you will run out of relics. So a good case to use this would be Shahala or Venom. It can still work in Annihilation, uh, but you have to be careful. And then even if you're using it in Shahala and Venom, do note that your minions have to be alive. If you are missing even one minion, you will not survive the black hole. Some people might say that sounds kind of risky, but do note that in my fight with Shahala, I didn't use Song of Aether. And if I did, it wouldn't even be remotely close. And I suspect with Song of Aether in place and the meta healing ability, if need be, we could easily tank a spiteful, vicious black hole. However, I was unable to find such a role to wrap up the traits for the Giga Chad build, though. Obviously, you're still going to have triage and regrowth by default. Fortify, Vigor, and Spirit are standard. This time, however, you're going to spec into expertise if you feel like it, uh, just because on Shahala or Annihilation, your minions can sometimes suicide on the edge, and just having a reduced cooldown to be able to summon them sooner is going to save your life. Bloodbond and Rugged are musts and mandatory, and then Barkskin, Glutton, and Strongback are also maxed. To reiterate though, in case someone tries to do some clusterfuck of an amalgamation with the Root Doctor build that I cannot understand why people praise, you cannot use a Reaver for any of this. It will not work the same. Bloodbond, Rugged, and double minions, I don't care if they're flying or on the ground are mandatory. Do not swap it and then come complaining to me later. Anyways, that is about it. What started as a joke ended up being probably the strongest tank build I'm ever going to find, but it is not the only tank build. There are other uses, better ways to go about different options, and those are things we'll talk about in later videos.